the hands on your body. God, I just pray for it to be in the hands of the Lord. God, I need this to come off and walk towards and get to our feet right now. Lift our hands and just begin to usher in the presence of Almighty God. Amen. God, we worship you, Lord. We praise you, Jesus. There is no other like you, God. You are so great, so powerful, and so mighty. You are so holy and so awesome, Lord. We worship you, Jesus. We magnify you, God. We lift up your holy name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. Oh, hallelujah. If you have a hand in your Bible, I want you to put a hand in the air. Just a sign of this around.
it's a good feeling to know that you can just call out to me and hope can be restored. And I can't keep him restored. I'm so thankful for that. Thank you for all that are just that are here with us. Thank you so much for being here with us. We're glad that you're here. I know we've been seated for just a moment. We're glad that we're here. We just want to say God bless you as you are today. Um, all of our friends that work with Soul Edge, we are so grateful for them for being here. I just love the fact that they give me Soul Edge and Mark and Mike and myself an opportunity to come here and be uh, back with them. I know they're very important today for our couple and their faith. They're getting married. Uh, Brother Mike here on Christmas Jolly. We also have Juan Cross uh, here at the church praying with the family and Mark and Mike. And Soul Edge Outreach is glad that they are here. And they're going to be continuing to make us part of their family. Um, and they this is their prayer. They said to me from February 6th. They were their vow of vow of faithfulness. Uh, so I'm wondering if you're still in there. Maybe you need to do that right now. But if you're not, there is a P.O. box that is available for donation. And then we do have a third way where you can give to Soul Edge Outreach. So they need to go and get on that one. Uh, let's go to the Lord with that one. That's just a great feeling. In the name of Jesus, God, I thank you for this opportunity to give back to your kingdom. God, I pray that you will bless this church. God, bless the gift and let us forgive us in the name of Jesus. We love you, Lord.
Praise the Lord Jesus. God's good. <laughs> Praise God. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord Jesus. Well, I wasn't here Sunday night, but um, somebody said, uh, are you doing better or what else? I said, I'm well. And they said, well, maybe you didn't have strep. That's really didn't come. I was afraid, my, you know, I didn't know if you want me to share that with you or not. And they said, well, did you go get a check and see if it was strep? And I said, no, I, you know, it was better by Monday, up in the day Monday. So they said, well, maybe it wasn't strep. I said, maybe you didn't have any faith. <laughs> Something like that. Because whatever it may be, God is able to heal. Do you believe that? Amen. Indeed, amen. amen. Praise God. <laughs> well, I'll just read one verse and then you can be seated if you like after just one verse. 2 Corinthians chapter 5 and verse 17. And um, the apostle is telling us, Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. All things are passed away, and behold, all things are become new. The only way to be made completely new is in the miracle of being in Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And this is not a moment or an hour or day or week or month, this is for our life. Amen. Made new. Thank Amen. God. Thank you, you may be seated. And just so I can brag a little bit, uh, I got brand new teeth. And they're permanent. And they're cavity proof. And they're not dentures. I mean, you know, the only reason I really, the main reason I don't want dentures is because I don't want to hurt anybody in the front row when I preach hard, <laughs> like my dad used to. I mean, well, he would grab his. He was a professional. <laughs> but uh, yesterday I went, and uh, they finished up all my dental work, and I'm thankful for that. And uh, once again, I can bite things. <laughs> Haven't bit anybody yet, but I can bite things. <laughs> Hallelujah. Well, that's as funny as it gets because I am fixing to tell you a very, very serious dream. And then we're going to preach the Word of God. It's always such a pleasure and so comfortable and such a blessing to preach to Souls Harbor, especially right here in Bellevue and, of course, everywhere, but especially right here in Bellevue. And um, just I, I kind of want to share a little bit. Um, my wife and I took a little trip away, you know, it was gone one weekend, and it wasn't simply to go away, it was to also to check out and test my endurance and see what I could do. As you know, I've kind of been overcoming some things, and it's been a while coming, but I feel so much better, and God's been so extra good to me. I believe he's totally and completely restoring me. Hallelujah. If I can just get my chest back up where it was, I would be in good shape. <laughs> you men don't start looking down at your own belly. I'm not talking about you. I'm just talking about those that can rest their arms on it like that, you know. Oh, my. I got to move. Paybacks are coming. On this past week, on January the 14th, about five days ago, I woke up at 6 a.m., and that was after I'd woken up earlier and went in my living room and built a 
good fire in the fireplace and went back to sleep. And just to let you know how deep and how effective and how much this dream, as the Bible does say, old men shall dream dreams. And I'm glad this dream wasn't just about because I'm old and about yesterday. I'm glad this dream was telling me about uh, now and into the future. But I dreamed, and I'm going to read it, and then I'll explain it maybe as I go. I dreamed I was driving an old-type school bus. As I pulled out of a parking lot, it wasn't at the church, I immediately noticed there was no type of like mirror to see on the, you know, like a side mirror on a bus to see what was coming. And I pulled out onto a little two-lane road, and there was a car coming at a very good speed in that lane that I was pulling out in. And with a school bus, as you know, you'd have to make a pretty wide turn coming out of just a little small parking lot and the driveway. And as I pulled, not being able to see if any traffic was coming, I pulled into a, that two small, uh, that two-lane road and was struck by a car instantly. It either hit me or even worse, it just plowed under the bus. I felt horrified. The sheriff deputies and emergency vehicles were everywhere. And as in a dream, sometimes it's just instantly they're there. They were all around. Bright lights, blue lights, red lights flashing, everybody hurrying about with activity of saving lives and mending the wounded. And I just felt so horrible because I knew it was my fault. I looked out the window of the bus, you know, the old school bus, I looked out the window across the little aisle of the bus, and I saw on the ground people hovered around something, and as I looked, I saw that it was a tiny baby. Matter of fact, it looked it, like it just about had to be a newborn baby. It was covered with some blood, and grass was stuck to it where it looked like it had rolled across the, the shoulder of the road. I burst into tears. I screamed, God have mercy, don't let that baby be dead. As I rushed to exit the bus, toward that, as the bus's folding door opens, I saw paramedics carrying a stretcher with a body covered up completely, except for the shoes. And they were sticking, toes were sticking straight up. So I could tell it was a man. I asked the deputies if anybody was killed, and they said yes. The old man on the stretcher was killed. I began to cry uncontrollably. I went to the baby in the grass, and I saw indeed it was a newborn, and it was okay. It was still connected to the umbilical cord and was born during the crash. The deputies took me to a just a nearby small building, like a little snack shop or smaller than a convenience store. They began to question me. As they questioned me, I knew I had no defense. It was my fault. And I thought, oh boy, I am going straight to jail. But they were very, so very kind to me. As I talked with them, I saw a group of our church young people. Y'all just keep showing up wherever I'm at. <laughs> now to go back to the seriousness of it. So 
So at that side of the, of the wreck, there was young people milling, just milling around, checking things out, and they weren't being loud or disrespectful necessarily in their words. They, they were just milling around outside and inside the little, what seemed to be a little tiny store. And I knew these young people, and so the, the um, store owner actually came out and said, do you know who these young people are? I told him, yes, they are our church young people. I was shocked and embarrassed when I was told they were very, very careless. They told me they were, the owner of the store said, they were just very, very careless. They told me they were just playing around, horsing around, not paying attention, knocking merchandise off the walls and just recklessly turning things over. Just not maliciously, but just, you know, carelessly and not paying attention. Then for a few minutes, I was just by myself outside, and in my dream, clearly, God spoke to me. And he said, the old dead man on the gurney was you. And then he said, and the newborn baby is also you. I woke up from the dream and said to myself, Immediately, oh God, I must die. I'm sorry. I must die to be made new. Now, to our youth and even the young adults, married or unmarried, this is what I seem like the Lord revealed to me at that point when I woke up. I immediately said, I must die and be made new. God told me very clearly, but then it seemed very obvious that I would say our youth and young adults have got to be more caring for others. They can't afford they can't uh, and be careful toward each other as well. I thought in the spirit as I was still waking up from that, God was still just in me, just like a power house in me. And I thought, they can't be offended if I tell them my dream experience with God because after all, all they need to do is straighten up, but I have to die. So you, you've got to look better than me. Now, the death is not, I don't think, a natural death. There was not even a hint of that in the spirit. I believe the Lord was telling me that God was taking some old dead stuff out of me. Whether he was cutting it off or ripping it out or washing it out or just nurturing me he was bringing brand new born life into me and I'm thanking God for it let's thank him together hallelujah 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 Before I began to pray about this dream and until I had it and God spoke to me about it and I began to pray about it, I really didn't have any intentions of preaching for yet a while longer. And one of the reasons is I kind of hinted to that for me going on that trip was just to see if I could push myself extra. And at that time, I did, but... <laughs> I had a lot of sore spots. <laughs> then the Lord gave me this scripture that I'm going to leave with and that I should impart something out of this to you. 2 Corinthians chapter 5 and verse 17. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. 
Old things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. Let's praise God for that. Now, I know this church goes far back beyond, in history, beyond me. It goes back beyond Bellevue. It goes back beyond Florida. It goes back before the discovery of America. Yes. It goes all the way back to the cross of Calvary. And yes. matter of fact, all the way back in the mind of God before, and before he even laid the foundations of the earth and created it. Yes. But here and now, what this means to us Romans 12 and 2 says this. Be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind that ye may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. The only way to be truly transformed is by the miraculous renewing of of our mind. Praise God. God, renew my mind. Pray it with me. Lord, renew my mind. Lord, renew my mind. Oh, my Lord Jesus, renew my mind. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Lord, put new thoughts in my mind. Put higher thoughts in my mind. Put higher, greater faith in my mind, oh God. Lord Jesus, put great revival in my mind. Lord, give me prayers I've never prayed. Let me pray them through the mind that you've given to me. Hallelujah. Praise God again together, shall we? Hallelujah. Now, I don't want to say that I expect everybody to jump to your feet every time you feel like clapping your hands or praising the Lord. But I do think that everybody ought to do it a couple times before I get finished. I'll check the tape. Now, we're preaching, and what we're preaching tonight is about uh, how to defeat the old sinful nature and that how that this miraculous renewing of our mind is swallowed up in a new and victorious new mind in God. Hallelujah. Well, Jesus actually, and the apostles as well, used a lot of natural, human, you know, temporal stuff to explain spiritual and even eternal matters. So I'll do that. The human body, we'll call that the outward man because as the scripture said, for which cause we faint not that though our outward man perish, Yet the inward man is renewed day by day. And so the outward and inward man to be compared. Now whether it's replacing old skin for new, maybe renewing our lungs, or maybe even having the privilege of growing some new hair. And even you folks, if you've got one sprig of hair on your head, even if you cut it until you shave it, God knows that there's a hair there, and he's still counting. I don't know if it's minus or plus or multiple, but he's counting somehow. (laughs) He knows the very hairs of our head, and they're numbered. But in the human body, at all times, there is a flux of renewal. Yes. All the time. All the time. The cellular 
And then we more late, more lately in the later years have learned the word, the, the letters DNA. And then deeper made makes the DNA, the cellular DNA atoms inside the body form new cells. Yeah. It's um, through the air we breathe, the food we eat the liquids we drink, and a number of some other things. Scientists say the body's cells largely replace, replace themselves every seven to ten years. Yeah. Old cells die and are replaced by new ones during this time span, which means that, you know, our, our liver or heart doesn't completely vanish and then start growing a brand new one. But it's replenishing every day, even this moment as you sit here, it's, it's replenishing to keep you a complete functioning heart. But through a, a span of time, while it's renewing, it's also, there's some things dying. So they, but... Just as a rule of thumb, they say every seven to ten years, the body renews itself. The cell renewal process happens more quickly in certain parts of the body, but head to toe rejuvenation can take easily a decade or two all in all. But new cells cannot replenish the body until the old cells die and are carried out. The body, the body renews itself in varying ways and, and at varying paces depending on how much work it needs to do and what it's exposed to and so forth. Other factors, I'm not trying to be a biologist or a scientist or a doctor or a surgeon or anything close to that. And I'd take out hundreds of words just to, so I could understand it and look things up in the dictionary so I could preach it and still get it down. Red blood cells, for instance, have a great job to do. They have a lifespan of only about four months, it says, as a result of their strenuous effort as they distribute, hear it, new life into the body and flush out old things from throughout the body. Yeah. Here's just a few life expectancy of other cells and these aren't exact, but they're best I could find in the search. The skin experiences a lot of wear and tear. I guess you know that. It is as the body's outmost layer of protection. These skin cells can rejuvenate every two to four weeks. Again, depends on us, our eating, our diet habits, and our work habits, and other things. The hair, good news. The body's natural fuzz, it calls it, has a lifespan of about six years for women, three years for men, and some just never see it again. It didn't say that here. I just put Just uh, clean your shower drain out. You'll find some. Hey, I've had to do that's why I know, you know, I'm a real good plumber. The liver. The liver is the human body's detoxifier. You know, we, we don't think about having bitterness in our body and poison things in our body, but we do. There's some things we eat that have certain ingredients, even vegetables. Many things we eat that are very nutritious. But if you took that one little bit of, extracted enough of that one part of it that's actually poison, 
and you put it in an eyedropper and swallowed it, you'd die right away. But it's there, but the liver filters it out enough for us to keep on living. I'm so thankful for the blood of Jesus Christ. Amen. The scientists say the liver and the is a human body's de detoxifier, purifying a wide variety of contaminants from our systems. It's aided in this process by constant blood supply and therefore remains largely immune to damage from all those toxins by renewing itself with new cells every 150 to 500 days. That seems to be saying there that it's a very small window that our liver has to replenish itself. Of course, stomach intestines and intestines, depending, there again, how much we use them, Cells that line the surface of the stomach and intestines have a difficult, short life, constantly battered by corrosives like stomach acids, and they typically last up to sometimes only five days before it has to be replenished. Our bone, the cells in our skeletal system, regenerate almost constantly. But the complete process takes a full 10 years to have basically all new bones slowly and partly and gradually as the old is taken out. And of course, it says this renewal process slows down with age. That's why our bones get thinner. I, I, know, I know a God that actually works miracles with bones, though, you know? Amen. <laughs> There's a story somewhere in the Bible about some bones that were really old, and they come back and stood up like a great army. <laughs> Let's believe God. I'm going to try to get off of this natural stuff, because it's really not all that great of things to say when you look at the reality of this body and this life, because the Bible makes it clear, it's appointed unto man once to die, and after that, the judgment. It lets us know that there must be a renewing continually or we would die. So that's what I'm talking about tonight, is we strive that day after day, all things are new. Old things are passed away. And let's switch over now to the blood of Jesus. How that we live through this life. We breathe contaminated things. We eat contaminated things. Sometimes we drink contaminated things. And the blood keeps washing it out. The blood keeps bringing in the strength and taking out the dead. The Lord knows there's some dead things in all of us that needs to be flushed out and there's some strength that we need that that blood of Jesus needs to bring it on. Hallelujah. Shout with me. Hallelujah. Have you had your first stand up yet? Shout hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise him. Let's praise him. Woo! Let's praise him. There's a lot of things that are going on all the time that we never give it a second thought, but God sees every sparrow. <laughs> Things that we forget about and don't even think about are sometimes the most important organs in our body. And yet, the Bible calls them uncomely, unbeautiful, things we don't want to look at. Lungs, liver, kidneys, heart. I don't know when's the last time you saw a heart out in your hand, but I, don't, I think I'll just not see it if I don't have to. 
Now the bad news I give to you, this earthly body will grow old and will always be in the process of dying. Somebody finally even wrote a song, Live Like You're Dying. I don't know the whole song, but I've heard some of it. But the good news is, it is our life, our body, our soul and spirit are being refurbished with new life. Every moment, every hour as we sit here, we live in this body by the refurbishment of Almighty God. Oh, hallelujah. The only reason you're still in church is the mercy of God. The only reason you're here praising God is because he loves you so much. You hadn't always loved him as much as he loves you. Maybe we could never love him as much as he loves us. But we are thankful for his faithfulness, his long suffering, his gentleness, his kindness, his all the things that give us strength and life, both in this world and in the world to come, life everlasting. Hallelujah. If any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. All things are passed away. Behold, all things become new. For any living thing to become new, it must be sacrificed. And in some cases, it must die. Except a corn of wheat fall in the ground and die. It abideth alone. So whether it be the clothing we're wearing, the food that we eat, or even our car we drive, the house we built to live in, all things require something to die that new things may come forth. Every piece of lumber was once a tree that gave its life. All of our clothing was that the sacrifice of a, of a sheep to make wool? He woke up that morning and had a full, thick coat of wool. Went to bed that night shivering, yeah. shaved down to the skin. Yeah. <laughs> some things require death and some things just require a considerable sacrifice, but for anything to be new and be renewed and continue to go on and continue, it, something must be sacrificed. I'm saying to this church tonight, I know pastor preached about sacrifice because I watched all the services. And you know what? It looks interesting from the back to see how many people is in the back and how many people's in the front. I, I got your name down, huh? I'm kidding about that. <laughs> but you've got to push on through and we must give up something. All things of this earth must sacrifice something or even die for something that other and future may continue. Plant life must sacrifice some parts and die that other, and other parts that other parts may be renewed. The very grass and even the lawn in your yard, in our field, or even those that feed our animals must give up <laughs> for us to eat either the, the vegetables or eat the animals that the grass provided. John 15, 2, whether or not it brings forth fresh fruit, it, he said, if it don't bring forth, you got to you got to uh, trim it. you got to prune it. Yep. And if it don't bring forth, you got to prune it. But even if it does, you've still got to cut it back if you want new yeah. and future fruit in life. Amen. He said, every branch in me that bringeth not fruit, he taketh away. 
And every branch that bringeth fruit, he purges it, that it may bring forth more fruit. There is a newness to our life. Our, our plants, our vineyards, fruit trees must be pruned and they must sacrifice those branches to bring forth new and fresh fruit every year. I don't remember exactly when, I don't remember clearly when I planted that orange tree that is now in pastors on his tree line. But I planted an orange tree and it has gave, given me a lot of good, juicy fruit and juice. However, along the way, about a year or two after I planted it, I watched proudly as it grew so tall. But when I got close and I looked closely, there were no nice, pretty oranges on there. There was a lot of new growth that had just, just sprung up from the ground area and was bigger than I expected. But behold, all the fruit on it was misshapen. It was naughty. That is like knots on it, not naughty. It was bitter to the taste and it was not beautiful. And I found out that somewhere from right down there at the, where the earth is, some things grew up and grew up quickly, more quickly than the good tree. And they're called, among some farms, suckers. They're called, you know, they're sprouts. But they come from the old nature. They come from the old earth. They come from the old stump. They come up and they grow more quickly and seem to produce fruit easier, but it's no good. Uh, is it possible? Just had a quick glance that people would say, wow, they got a lot of beautiful fruit in their life. Wow, look what the growth is in that life. But not taking a close look, but I can assure you that our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, who is merciful, who is long-suffering, but yes, has some requirements. There must be some purging. There must be some pruning. There must be some cutback. There must be some things that cut off and die that other things might spring forth and live and may the church live with this in our heart. Hallelujah. Woo, hallelujah. Oh, I want to live in him. That's where I find my joy. That's where I find my peace. That's where I find my strength to go through the tough times. It's all in Jesus. And sometimes there's not a place to put newness of life if the old things that are passed away are in the way and we haven't let it go. We need to let some things go. We need to let God wash some things out of us. We need to let him wash some attitudes or maybe some grudges or maybe just some things that don't need to be there. Let's pray a minute, every person, from the front to the back to the balcony. Oh God, oh God, oh Lord. Oh Lord. Uh, hallelujah. <laughs> we can be strengthened and kept and preserved by God until we are made new in His image and into His image and be like even unto His glorious body. In the Holy Ghost, we find new blessings, new hope, new strength, new life, greater understanding, wisdom, knowledge, and oh, such love to teach us how to love. You can stand or sit. I don't want you to feel like you have to stand. We must die to our own will. 
If we don't die to our own will, there may be some accomplishments that don't come our way. We need new strength and new life and greater understanding so that we can have these new accomplishments. There's some things we need to die to to have a good and happy and long marriage. There's some things that we must get over so that we don't drag the poison and the bitterness into our families even. We don't even necessarily have to say it, but just the spirit of it in our home can get into our own children. (laughs) I don't want any bitterness in my children, Lord. I don't want any bitterness and bitterness in my grandchildren or my friends or the people I hang around. I don't want to, con- I don't want to give that. I want to give some extra love. I want to give some extra forgiveness. I want to get past old hurts. Oh my, whether it was physical or mental or maybe a sexual perversion. Oh God help us. He can heal the deepest wound. He can heal the greatest hurt. I'm finishing now. He can heal the hardest heart and the hardest attitude. Things that happened when we were young years ago. Things that happened for you in the military on a battlefield far away. You that were a long way from God and maybe knew nothing about God. Maybe your mother and your parents didn't, but you've heard me say so many times in this church, you have the awesome privilege of starting a new legacy. You have the awesome privilege of starting a new future for you and your children, your grandchildren, should the Lord tarry. Oh, let's praise the Lord. Oh, let's praise the Lord. Now, the very reason we're here tonight, the very reason we're here praying, this is my last paragraph, stay with me. The reason we worship, the reason we're here to raise our hands, the reason we clap our hands, sometimes even when we don't feel like it, is we have read the scripture and we have heard the preaching and we wear out the tires on our car and burden the gasoline in our tanks and use our energy when we could be home sleeping or resting is so that when our body dies, this body finally takes its last breath. We have a promise. Oh, we have a new body fashioned like unto his glorious body forever with him in heaven. Can we all shout together? Can we all believe it together? Can we all trust God together? If you're not ready, why don't you get ready together? Why don't we pray together? Repent together. Pray through until we speak in tongues together. Oh, until we yield ourselves to God completely. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Come on, let's praise the Lord. I invite you to lift your hands, stand to your feet and ask the Lord, renew me again. Oh, Lord, don't let it be just in my mind a one process. I've been renewed a long time ago again today, again right now, again right now. God, let some things die off of me and let there be a newness that comes in me. Oh, God, make me new again and again and again. Jesus, 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 Jesus. We're going to pray one more time together. I believe one of the things that is amazing is your body that naturally renews itself. 
You don't have to think about it. You just have to put the right things in. Put yourself in the right situations. And your body is renewed. The same is true with your spiritual man. I don't have to every day go, oh, is it renewed? I don't have to stress and worry. I just got to get into a prayer room. I just got to get back to the house of God. I just got to worship. the. And if I will just do those things, all of the, I feel the Holy Ghost right. I, I feel the renewing power of God here right now. I encourage you from the front to the back. Uh, do the things that bring the renewing, that bring the refreshing. Come on. Uh, let it be the natural byproduct uh, of spiritual activity in the name of the Lord Jesus in the name of the Lord Jesus yes 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 Rejoice with them that rejoice. Come on, we can take another minute or so and just get out of where you are. Why don't you stroll around in Zion? Why don't you begin to just allow spiritual things to renew your spiritual man? Come on, what are you doing? We're allowing we're now the renewing process to happen. What are you doing, Pastor? We're allowing the spiritual renewal process. He kesete yalaba. He kodroko si kodrada. He kesete yalalalalama. Miracles, 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 miracles. Hey! Oh! Oh! You know, can you imagine the trauma of your body taking a, your femur out and putting another one in? Medically, that's what happens. What happens to people spiritually is if you do not learn to engage at every opportunity and you wait weeks or months or years, God may renew you, but your body's going to take a beating in the process. The Bible says our ember man is renewed day by day. See, that's why it's so important. You say, well, I I didn't see anything. I didn't realize that my liver got uh, uh, some new cells. But if I would wait and replace the whole thing at one time, it would be bad. But just because it's in the natural rhythm, I don't even know it happened. Uh, The same is true with your spirit. If you just learn uh, every opportunity, uh, I'm going to touch the throne room. Uh, It's Oh, I feel the Holy Ghost. Uh, It's just a natural flow. Uh, Oh, uh, taste and see uh, that. 
that the Lord is good from the rising of the sun to the going down of the same the name of the Lord is to be praised I will bless the Lord at all times his praise shall continually be in my mouth that's how I am renewed day by day oh Oh, what a word from the Lord. Clap your hands one more time. What a word from the Lord. Hallelujah. 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 Oh, y'all feel that renewing? I feel a renewing in this place. I feel strength in this place. Hallelujah. 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 I would like for us to keep the Cymru family in prayer. Uh, Many of you know uh, Cymru is a wonderful Jamaican couple. He was a pastor for many years, normally set back in this area, but he passed away this past week, and we want to keep Sister Cymru in prayer and that family. We will give you more information as it comes as far as services, but uh, he pastored and served Many places through the years, but uh, for a long time it was in uh, Brooksville, and I believe that's where the service will be held, but for those of you that know him and love them, and uh, they were a blessing while they were here with us, and uh, we want to continue to pray for them. Let's, let's pray for the Cymru family right now together. Lord, we thank you for these wonderful people that have served God, that have given themselves to the kingdom of God. God, he is now at rest with you. No more sorrow, no more pain. (laughs) No more trips to the doctor, nothing. Just at peace in the bosom of Abraham. And we thank you for that, Lord Jesus. I pray for Sister Cymru. I pray that you will lift her and encourage her, strengthen her. I pray for their family. Be with them like only you can. Lord, we thank you for this family. We thank you for our church family. Be with all of those, God, that are going through things. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Last thing I want to say before we close is you're going to be hearing more about it in the next week or so. But we want to become more and more effective at being a family and being able to carry the load of each other. The Bible says, bear ye one another's burdens and so fulfill the law of Christ. And uh, we want to make sure that we are doing that. And so we're going to be giving people the opportunity to kind of help us uh, because there's lots of people uh, that come. You put all the campuses together and there's lots of things going on. And we want people to, if you be praying about it, you have a heart that I just want to be one of those ones that make calls and and reach out. We're going to be talking about that more, okay? I love you wonderful people. I encourage you, don't just walk out the door. Greet someone, give them a fist bump, a hug, a wave, something, and let them know you're happy to see them. Aren't you thankful, Bishop, preaching the word of God to us? Hallelujah. I love you. You're dismissed. Brother Asa, Brother Fager, and whoever else I talk to, come come quickly so we can get this done. Brother Asa, Brother Fager.